going? How you nice going? Nice to meet you, guys. It's nice out here. It's beautiful out here. It's nice. So, they're in the field. They're in the field. Because George Bush, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, George Bush Sr., they were all controlled by the same people. And Donald Trump is not controlled by the people. And that's why they care. And, that, and that's why they... Here's what, here's what they do. The Democrat Party uses mainstream media to keep its base ignorant so they can fully control them with emotion. Because emotion is a much more powerful motivator than logic. If you're emotional about something, and you and I are arguing, and all I have is logic, guess what? To everybody watching, you're going to be the winner of the debate. Because you have emotion, you're passionate about it. If I don't have passion, and I only have logic, I'm going to lose that argument. I don't think it's always the case, but yeah, I do believe in some things. Exactly, and that's what they do. That, that's why they want to keep the massive big Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm in the middle of the street, both figuratively and literally. See what I did there? I was admiring the shiny piece on your hip, buddy. What make is it? 45? I dig it. What is it, uh, be quiet and carry a big stick? Right on. So, I don't mean to, uh, do you mind? No. Cool. What's, uh, what's your sign represent then? Uh, I mean, institutional racism. The folks like this who are standing here are crossing the street for black lives. Right on. I don't think that people who are racist should be allowed to like uh, inflict that sort of hatred on other people, so that's why I'm out here. Gotcha. That makes sense. But... Uh, I just stood on the side of the street peacefully. All I've been done is going to be a So what makes you want to be on this side of the street versus the other side? Because uh, I want to make them uncomfortable. More welcome. <laughs> right on. I want to make them uncomfortable in the racism. Okay. <laughs> I'm not uncomfortable by that. I'm not sure if you're pro or anti or anything, but you're standing right next to program. Oh, that's cool. There, a lot of people don't realize that there are more people on like the left side that are actually kind of pro gun. It's interesting seeing those people. <laughs> Fair enough. You're in close proximity anyway. So, uh, what do you gentlemen feel about uh, him standing right next to you like this? Just wait for that. it. I know. It'll probably answer hey, American. Yep. American. True that. He can uh, do what the hell he wants to do. I just ain't lazy to do Did you gentlemen serve? Huh? You gentlemen serve? Sign, sir. Yes. Right on. He's also a police officer. Cool beans. Tell him I said thank you. Yes. Marine Corps myself. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. He was Air Force 10 years ago. Oh. Big K9. Oh, never mind. I, I want to take that handshake back. <laughs> he would have said the same thing. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Something about the jarhead yeah, or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Jarhead. Alrighty. You guys are just pissed because you slept in tents and they slept in motels. <laughs> if we had tents. <laughs> if we had tents. If we had tents. No, I'm uh, just getting both sides of the story. I've seen a few times where you have conservatives and Democrats right next to each other, like this. And I think it was a gentleman, another Marine vet from Maryland, had a, a 1911 on his hip right there, and there's some Democrat ladies standing by chatting with him, and yeah. it's fine. I think that's awesome. It is. That's America. Absolutely. You have the of choice. That's what makes America America. It's just like the protest. They have the right to do this. Do that. I know, I know a lot of people are upset about the violence and stuff. And That's why I'm good. Yeah. With the big stick. <laughs> right on. I dig it. As long it. as it stays on violent, I'm good. 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 And then it's peaceful. Yeah. I'm just trying to, trying to understand what, what your mindset was on it. What about you, young man? What's your mindset on all this? I, I, I mean, I'm neutral on the whole politics thing. I think about politics. But what it is about is we need to stop the racism that exists in this country, the organized hate. It's 2020, it's time to move on. Everyone deserves a fair shot at life. And a lot of people aren't getting it. That's a very good concept, just don't let it control you. Anger. Don't, don't, don't let hate, hate or anger control you. Absolutely not. I was in the military, they served in combat. I was in law enforcement for 25 years. 
okay? I don't think we need parties. Why do we have a party? What do you think of that? I mean, a big step forward is just having like a, a ranked voting system the way that other countries do, which allows their parties to be more competitive. Is that with the, like, multiple votes? Right, so essentially so. you rank, you know, Gloria Lariva's my top person, and she's not going to win, so then I would have this person, and then Joe Biden, and then Donald Trump, or whatever. And those votes, are, there's, like, sort of an algorithm that sort of calculates, like, well, this person got, you know, this many points. And this person got many points. It, Either the all are on. Yeah, by places like Britain and Canada and France, you have five, six, seven parties that are represented in Parliament instead of just two. Whatever you want to call I don't think the Republican Party represents them well either. I don't think the Democrats represent anybody. I don't think the Republicans. When they get together and shake hands down here, look for the screw job in the darn paperwork. Look for the screw job in the 200 page freaking bill that why we need legislators making up new shit on the fly every day. How many, how many, do you need a law book this big? Huh. A lot of people pissed off at Trump. Gotcha. But when he's passing laws that decriminalize shit and get people out of prison, that's how they'll stay alive. These nonviolent offenders, Ron Paul, the same thing. Nonviolent offenders. Why are we giving them 15 years? Because they have something on them? Why do they harm anybody? It's their choice if they want to harm somebody. If you are hurting yourself, you have self autonomy to hurt yourself. Look, I know it's in the best interest of your friends and your family to always talk about the truth in your life. Not just what you're going to do, George Floyd, George Floyd, and your body, but just that was everything that you're going to do. It's not giving them the right to pick up shit on the fly and intrude in our lives. Because they don't want to be in the public. So, non-violent drugs. Seriously, get the heroin off the streets. I get it. Okay. But when you're talking about marijuana, it's going to be stuff. Come on, give me a freaking thing. How's it going, buddy? You said you were a vet? Marine Corps. Thank you for your service, brother. Thank you. Thank you for your service out here, I guess, whatever you're doing. What brings you here? I'm uh, just making sure everybody's safe. Good. 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 What do you think about the message getting put across? Hey, they're, they're entitled to their message. Good. They're entitled to their message, absolutely. That's what this country's built on, is ideas and, and opinions. You know, if, we, if we didn't have that, what kind of a country do you think we'd live in? Not our country, that's for sure. You know, I, I'm all for it. You know, so get your message out. True People that. like they're doing it, and everything's fine. You think they're uh, they're doing a good job so far? The, yeah, I the mean, way it, they're doing what they're permitted to do. And it is their constitutional right to peaceably assemble. Hell yeah. And absolutely, I, I'm always, I always stand for that. That's why I went to the military. As much as their right to peacefully assemble and express themselves as it is your right to stand here with the gun. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I got in a conversation with a few of the people over there, and I said, this stuff is not to intimidate you, it's to make sure that everybody's safe. And I said, that means on both sides of the street, everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. We like this town, you know, we like it the way it looks, and with what's happening across the country, which is just deplorable, I mean, come on, people, really, you, you tear up your towns, you loot the stores, you burn them down, you're killing your own people, innocent people. That's just, anybody who would say that that's normal has got a problem. Were you worried that something like that could potentially happen at a place like this? I, I think it could potentially happen anywhere. It's not just here. Right on. Did you see any evidence that that would be potential today? No. Good. Nope. Everything. Everybody's been uh, well, with the exception of a, a few uh, interactions that weren't so kosher. But everybody's been pretty much peaceable. And I've seen people going back and forth across the streets to talk to each other. So you know, the communication is right. the biggest thing. You know, get your message out. Everybody has a right to get a message out. And, you know, it is what it is. And this is the way it's supposed to happen. First Amendment right. Hell yeah. What do you think about those guys standing over there? Oh, well, they don't bother me at all. The one gentleman stepped, stepped off the curb and put his hand on his gun. He tried to threaten me, but I wasn't... That's a little rude. That's what the first and second amendment of the is. It's way down. It is.
is, yeah. So I'm gonna go film the rude guy. Why, somebody get this. Why, why people? Why people feel the need that they can say whatever they want, but they won't say whatever they want without a gun? And then there are some people that are trying to shut thought, down people's speech. I thought this road speech. was closed. Yeah. I thought this road was closed. It is. Well, I'm a biker around, too, and that's that's yeah, rude as hell. My bike's parked. Turn them around, oh, yeah. bro. I parked like three blocks down because they freaking block off all the parking. This is rude as hell, man. It's a nice bike, I'll give it that. Benji, I'm back. How's it going?
somebody that missed that. Apparently, uh, some guys got really close and started yelling at each other. So the cops got in between everybody. Right now, we're going to go look at a dog. I like dogs. Can I pet him? Yay! This is the second dog I got to pet today, so it's a great day for me. Someone's excited. Can I pet her? That's his name's Mac. He's a boy. Oh, is it Max? Max. Hey, Max. How's it going? What do you think? I like your bandana. That's pretty cool. This is why I really came here today, today folks. To see Max. Oh, no, the butt scratches. So you don't like the term All Lives Matter? Yes. What's, what's that mean? No, no, it's not that I don't like the term, but people are saying it and they want to do Black Lives Matter. Okay, okay, okay. Right. All lives matter to them until they're gay, trans, black, a refugee. They need food, sanitary, and health. So you think it's like a snapback at Black Lives Matter? I think it's a snapback. Okay. But we have the unequal So, refund it, reform it, retrain, so on and so forth. 
This is not like Black Lives Matter does not mean that other lives don't matter. No matter we stand, the That's the big we part of it that seems to be happening. It's about to be and we need to have that conversation. This is not just one person that got killed. This is multiple people. This is a systemically racist system. You look at the Constitution, like you said, you made a vow to protect that Constitution. But if you look at that Constitution, if you look at the signatures, where is, where is the signature of people who look like me? Yeah, it wasn't counted. Exactly. So, so it's a systemic racist system from the ground up. It's, it's a protest. This ain't a conversation right now, man. It's a protest. That's all I'm saying. In order to get a message across, well, uh, we can stream back and forth and get nothing accomplished. But I'm not down the street. Walk down the street, but in the middle of a bunch of people, it's going to get heated quick and people on shit's going to happen. So you were saying about systemic racism and stuff. What are ways that you think that we can fight that? Oh, sorry, well, number man. one, I think the education system, right? That needs to change. Our education is screwed up from the ground. We put a lot of money into education, and it's pretty bottom of the barrel. It is horrible, right? Like I, like, like outside of black and white, let's just talk about Christopher Columbus, right? Yeah. Do you remember in, school, in elementary school they teach you that song in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue? Like he was this great so hero poetic. guy. First off, how do you discover a place that's inhabited by a billion fucking people? Second. What about Leif Erikson, right? Wasn't he here before Christopher Columbus? Just Didn't a little he put bit. It on the map? Yeah. Right? But we celebrated him. Like, so now you look around the country, you go, look up, that's what they're saying. This isn't okay. We need to tear down these statues. We need to tear down these racist monuments. And that's the first thing we have. I don't think that's erasing history. I think it's about recognizing that we should not be, sorry, we should not be supporting our racist history. We, but we should educate on how this country started, what the truth is. And honestly, when you look at the Constitution, let's really talk about it. This was a bunch of white European dudes who came over prosecute, or, you know, fleeing persecution themselves. In my opinion, the whole thing was based on post-traumatic stress disorder, and now we're here suffering the effects of hundreds of years of post-traumatic stress disorder as a country. The oppression on some people is eventually rough. trickled down to more everyone, and now I think we're in the, the waning moments of it. It's 2020. Some of this shit shouldn't exist. We shouldn't have to be out on the streets protesting racism. We shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to explain why black lives matter. That's not making a racist statement. That's literally just saying, like, hey, we're in distress as a community. We keep getting killed for nothing. And it's no longer okay. And there are the people that are like, well, white people get killed by cops too. And I'm 100% in agreement. Police reform would be a good idea. Improved training, altering funding to programs that are more beneficial to the community as a whole. But some people block that out when you say like police reform. They think that you're wanting to get rid of the police altogether. Well, when they say defund the police, the media thought process is, oh, we're going to take all money away from the police. And it's like, no, you're you're polarizing or getting caught in this like concept that's not even true. Defunding the police means stop giving them extra money. Put that extra money that we keep putting into, into like, you know, militarizing our police, put it into our education system. Put it into our house. Yes, they're at a bar, man. Oh my god! We should go in there have some beers with I, I've talked to probably about five or six people on the other side, and we've all had really peaceful conversations. That's awesome. And a lot of, the black boy with braids is my son. The black boy with braids is my son. Hey, Lord. 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 Hey, Lord.
when you tear down the divide in between the climate, there's a lot of similarities. There is more similarities than differences. I, I think a lot of this is manufactured. I agree. It's like put it, the media likes to focus in on the negatives of both sides. I agree. And bra blast that. I tell everybody, you can't just watch Fox News. You can't just watch CNN. You need to watch both to understand the lies that are being told, and then you need to take the stories that they're telling you and research it yourself. That's one of the biggest problems. We keep getting scoops and information from both sides so we blow up in our head and we're ready to fight. It's furthering the divide. It's making the tribalism. Falling apart when Don't unity shoot. is how we move forward. Don't unity shoot. is how we solve all this. Uh, that's why I'm trying to like go back and forth each side here. Everybody's going to hear about things. And I appreciate you doing it. They wanted to get guns out of the hands of minorities, and that's an easier way to oppress people. Yeah, I mean, one of the conversations that I had earlier was like, yeah, they have the right to practice their Second Amendment, have their gun. If I came here with a gun, if we were all up here over armed, this would be a completely different situation. We would be considered a terrorist group. And we're, you you see what happened with the Black Panther Party, right? They got kind of demonized pretty hard, that's for sure. They did. But all their ten tenets, the ten belief systems that they had in place, almost Every one of them are still relevant today. And to me, that's sad. That's really sad that we're still facing the same problems that we were facing when I was inside my mom's home and before that. This is sad. This is systemic racism. This is what we're here for. That we should not still be suffering the same injustices that we were suffering since Jim Crow. That we are suffering since slavery. It's crazy. There are two different types of America. Both Malcolm X and Martin Luther King pointed them both out. There are two different sides to America. There is definitely a white America and there is definitely a black America. I'm trying to get everybody's message out, man. I just want to hear what people have to say. I'm here. So someone who looks like me can stand next to a brother who doesn't look like me and can say, enough's enough. Because people say there isn't racism in this country, they're lying. It's been around since this country was founded. And if you don't see that, you're just, you're blinding yourself. I think there's, there could be debates about like what level it's at, but it's, to say it's not at all, that's a good my, my problem is there, the system doesn't need to be fixed, it needs to be rebuilt, because it was built this way. It was built on the backs of slaves, people of color who didn't have a choice in what they did with their lives. Do you think it's not repairable? I think it's repairable, it's just going to take a long time, and it starts with stuff like this. People of all races, men, women, children, it doesn't matter. As long as people are here together saying enough is enough, we're, we have to be heard. I don't care if there's a thousand of us and ten of them, we're still going to be here. I think a lot of here. people on that side, they're, they're kind of concerned about the violence and stuff. I, I haven't seen that here today. Our group makes it a point to stay peaceful. Because the moment something like from our side isn't peaceful, that's the headline. Black Lives Matter is out of control. They need to be shut down. That's why we strive for peace. Because if anything goes wrong on our side, it's a wrap. If something goes wrong on their side, they're just standing for what they believe in. That's the problem. 
It's that double standard that the system is built upon. You don't think that the spotlight goes this, uh, the other way too? I think there's a spotlight on the other side, it just isn't reflected in the same way. Because one of my, my brothers who lead Ibn Arash and you are all people of color. If one of them crosses this line, punches somebody in the face, Black Lives Matter is a problem. They put a gun, take a shot at you in the air. So, if, if someone on that side pulls out a gun and shoots it in the air, they're just using their Second Amendment. Not necessarily. I'm a big proponent of the second myself. I believe everybody should be on oh, I, I agree. I'm not taking away from that. Yeah. I'm just saying, if anything happens on our side, we're criminals. It doesn't yeah. matter if I'm white, black, whatever. If anybody on Black Lives Matter side is does something wrong, we're criminals. If they do it, that's their First Amendment, freedom of speech. I disagree with that. I think that if that would happen, if one of them would initiate it, I think they'd be demonized pretty bad too. Let me tell you a story. I don't think it's equal. The but. first week we had a protest in Milford, and my brother Keon ran over across the street to help defuse the situation. His picture was the headline of the newspaper that next day. And it said, Black Lives Matter trying to start it. Yeah, that's a little biased when we get Exactly, exactly. And that's the problem I have, is the media is skewed in favor of not anti-black, anti-Black Lives Matter. I could be a white redneck on their side screaming All Lives Matter, and I'm fine because I'm white. But anybody who doesn't look like me says Black Lives Matter, you're, you're being racist too. Do you think that the divide that's you, like I talked to both people on both sides and it seems like there's more in common than there is different. Do you think this divide that we have here is manufactured? Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind that it's manufactured by the government because see this right here? I'm white. He's black. I didn't know that. This is my brother. This is my brother. My brothers and sisters are here. Doesn't matter if they're white, black, doesn't matter. They're my family. And the fact I'm never going to say all lives don't matter. That's not the point we're trying to prove. You can't say all lives matter to black lives matter. Do you think yeah. that's like a bit of a, like a spit in the face when they say all yes. lives matter? Like as a reply? Absolutely. Especially when somebody who looks like me is fighting for black lives matter because I don't have to be here because I'm white because I have that privilege. Because I can run in my neighborhood and not have to worry about getting shot. I can sleep on my bed and not have to worry about being shot. I can go to the store with a fake $20 bill. Yeah, I'll get in trouble, but I won't get suffered. I won't be strangled with someone's knee for nine minutes because I'm white. That's the problem. All day, united we stand or divided we fall. This is a problem. I'm fine with having conversation. I love having conversation. I hate having them scream in my face, me scream in their face to get your point across. So so what would you say to somebody that's willing to listen? Like, that's on the line. Educate yourself. Really look at what's going on in this country. You're worried about what you swear you have kids sitting on a bar.
I guarantee you, I can guarantee you, that young sister up there in the blue side of that shirt, she will not forget this. They will not forget what we did today. People in Washington will you. talk about this for the rest of history. They will talk about it forever. Because guess what? And this is not the last time we will be in Washington. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Union County Sheriff. Thank you, Washington PD. Northumberland County Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Hayden, for, for, for doing this thing. We appreciate all of our brothers in blue for standing up for what is right. I'm sorry, the state police as well, DSP, thank you. Almost forgot you guys. What's wrong? Hey guys, Will here. First of all, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciated it. I, I try to put a lot of time into actually like cutting down the live stream to parts that are more focused on the actual communications and more interesting aspects of the protest. Um, if there's anything cut out that you thought that should have been left in, I do apologize. I didn't intend to like cut anything out or spit it anyway. Uh, so. If you want the entire live stream still on my Facebook, feel free to go check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Um, but some of the cuts that I made were either just dead space when I was just walking around or stuff that like really didn't look really good or sometimes the audio really cut out. So I tried to cut a lot of that stuff and just keep it on more of the interesting things for this uh, highlight video. But again, if you, if you thought there was anything that I should have uh, kept in, let me know. And if I do any other future live streams and cuts like this, I will try to keep stuff like that in if possible but thanks for watching uh take it easy and have a great independence day weekend take care